Hey guys, this is No Absolute Fencing, John speaking. Uh, today I thought I'd make a video showcasing two of our students and close friends, uh, Josh and Nicholas. Um, they are both still fairly new to the HEMA scene, um, and most of their experience in sparring comes from uh, our DUSAC teachings from Meyer and what we have touched base on with Saber, um, but recently we've been sparring with Messers a lot, and I thought I'd make a video showing how they've been doing with those. Keep in mind that we don't have any Messer manuscripts on hand. Uh, the things that we have learned from Messer has come from other YouTubers who have t uh, touched base on Messer and given the basics of them. Um, so we know the, the bare minimum, uh, but we're playing in the near future on moving forward into actual devices and such. So I hope you all enjoy. Good. So you might notice that Josh has a more aggressive fighting style than Nick, so while Nick was retreating, Josh kind of kept up the pressure and was able to get a hit off on Nick's hand. I think he was unable to tell if it, the hit was sufficient enough, which is why he follows up for a second hit, uh, hitting Nick's hand once again. So here Nick was trying to keep his energy up, I think to not give Josh the opportunity to overrun him again. Um, and while Josh went in for a cut to the face, he barely kind of slapped with the side of the messer, uh, which we consider insufficient contact, of course, uh, allowing Nick to get a decent thrust in on Josh's tum tum. Good. So on this one, uh, Josh waits for Nick to take the bait and uh, push his blade out of the way. That way he can rotate around and strike at Nick's leg without being compromised. Um, sometimes this is very risky because obviously Nick could have uh, turned his blade around and struck at uh, Josh's head, but I think he was just so surprised by it that he didn't take the, uh, the opportunity to do so. So here Nick was trying to be more uh, aggressive, which is good because Nick tends to fight very defensively. The only issue is that he was uh, moving his blade around a little too much, uh, following through too far with his attacks, and so it kind of left him pretty exposed, making it so pretty much the only action he could think to do there was try to parry with the flat, but by the time he had his blade up he was already hitting the hand. Good. So this is kind of a weird one. Um, Josh did land the strike on Nick's leg. It was just barely. It was kind of like the tip. Um, so it's kind of hard to see that from here. Uh, but then Josh didn't cover his retreat. So Nick was able to get a decent thrust in on Josh's tummy. We weren't keeping score that day. But if we were, I definitely would have given the point to Nicholas. If not simply for the fact that his strike as a thrust to the uh, torso was definitely more deadly than the, the scrape he got on the knee in the process. Nick fell into the same kind of mistake on this one that I tend to make, where he tried to deceive Josh with some blade work, but he didn't allow Josh to take the bait, so it became very apparent what he was doing. This wouldn't be so much of a problem if his strike after the attempted feint wasn't so aggressive that it left him completely exposed, allowing Josh to take advantage of it and get a decent head off to the face. So on this trade, I think Nick's uh, doing a pretty good job keeping his energy up. He has both hands on the weapon, which was allowing him to deflect a lot of blows that I think normally he would have had a little difficulty with. Um, the issue comes in with the fact that when you're using the weapon two-handed, you create a you lose a little bit of range and you create kind of a bigger target for your opponent. So while he wasn't in range of Josh, Josh was in range to hit him immediately after the uh, strike failed.
This one's very similar to the uh, attack that happened earlier, but instead of uh, Josh allowing his blade to be displaced, uh, whenever Nick went in for the thrust, Josh actually just displaced the thrust altogether and then allowed himself to have a strike under at Nick's uh, rib area, rib abdomen area. Uh, and I think the, the force of it was just enough that Nick wasn't able to react because of the shock of it all. So this one was kind of a case of not knowing when the hit was sufficient. The hit to the leg was kind of light, the hit to the head was pretty light, uh, and Nick hadn't called anything in specific, so Josh kind of kept up the pressure until he was certain that he got a hit that, you know, everyone would agree was a pretty good hit. This one, uh, sadly, was a double. I had originally thought that it was uh, just Nick getting the strike off. Nick actually landed a strike on Josh's head, which is great, uh, but he left his legs uh, exposed, so Josh was able to strike at his uh, upper thigh area again. Once again, Nick's hit was definitely a higher prioritized hit, being a strike to the face, but we try to discourage doubles of all kinds simply because it, you should always be able to strike your opponent without getting hit, and I think that's important when prioritizing this as a martial art over a sport. This was a pretty good uh, instance of getting in and out without getting hit on Nick's part. He uh, did a far out step to his left and then performed an Unterhau to Josh's underarm and then was able to defend himself from the oncoming blow. So on this final trade, y'all might have noticed that loud sound near Nick's hands. Uh, I think they were both acknowledging that he didn't get hit there. I think the messer hit somewhere near the guard or the pommel, um, but they were both kind of making sure each other knew before he engaged with that thrust, which Josh was able to deflect and then turn around and strike down at Nick's arm, uh, just kind of bringing back up the, the, the downside to wheeling the messer two-handed once again as you become a larger target and you cut down on your range. So wh while Nick was unable to reach uh, Josh with ease and he had to really get in there with that thrust uh, Josh was able to reach Nick without getting hit in return. So overall a good last trade I just wanted to thank y'all again for watching. Uh, we really appreciate y'all taking the time to watch our videos. I know we're not the best in the HEMA community, but we do try to do what we can where we can uh, in the HEMA community and we appreciate all the support if there's any critiques uh, or anything you'd like to provide for these guys, please leave them in the comments below. I'm sure they'd love to hear them. Um, they know that they're still kind of beginners and they're still figuring things out. So, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of things that can be improved, but they're definitely making decent progress uh, for, for what it is. If there's anything we can do to improve the content here, please let us know as well. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you want to see more content like this or see more of uh, the things we're doing nowadays, uh, feel free to subscribe, and as always, we will see you next time.